Let's talk some stocks. We do have some news in Tesla as the shares have been moving higher. They've been ripping here the last uh, about four or five days, Renita. Kind of carrying the torch as some of the AI stuff fizzled out. Tesla's got its groove back. It does, and it came through charging networks. So today, or actually last night, I saw this news come through as I was leaving the newsroom that Tesla is opening up its charging network to GM vehicles now, GM EVs, and that makes 12,000 Tesla superchargers available to GM EV drivers in North America. That'll begin in 2024, and beginning in 2025, GM EVs will be built to gain direct access to Tesla superchargers without an adapter for 2024 they'll have to use an adapter but GM is also integrating Tesla supercharger network into the vehicle and mobile apps so that it'll be easier to pay for or reserve their charging stations and for Tesla let's just be honest about it it'll be able to make more money since it's already been charging other vehicles more to use their chargers than it charges its own vehicles and it's I think a push to slowly make Tesla's plugs the end industry standard. Analysts have been saying this as well because it may result in squeezing out competitors and raise concerns ultimately. But this also pushes close Tesla closer to qualify for its piece of the seven and a half billion dollars that the federal government is spending to speed up the construction of charging stations and make those more accessible. But Ford and GM they risk becoming too dependent on their largest competitor. Oliver, the Elon Musk said that this deal is going to be a fundamentally great thing for the advancement of EV adoption, but really it could be a greater thing for Tesla as I think that Elon Musk has always wanted to dominate the industry, of course, dominate the world, but the plug mm -hmm. itself is called the North American Charging Standard. I don't think anything is more blatant than that when you want to actually become the standard. However, Tesla does have its own risks in this, Oliver. It risks having more crowded stations, and Tesla owners have been complaining about the long wait times at EV charging stations, and this is only going to make them long with two other vehicle kinds that are able to do it and who knows any more may come into the fold but for now analysts love this Wed Bush's Dan Ives raised his price target on Tesla to $300 from $215 a share Morgan Stanley says that this is good for consumers good for Tesla and quite a good sign for GM in terms of moving the needle on capital discipline and collaboration well Big uh, story, I think, uh, now that you got GM and Ford both in uh, the charging lane yeah. for Tesla, really kind of admitting that certain parts of this game they've just already lost. Mm -hmm. uh, so a big uh, symbolic event, I think, for Tesla, for sure. Uh, of course, Dan Ives with a colorful uh, analogy here, uh, yeah. playing chess, others are playing checkers. Okay, mm -hmm. I get it. Uh, kind of seems true right now. Shares are loving it, uh, I can see that. And finally, uh, Tesla really doing its work pulling the market here after it had been uh, lagging a little bit the past month. Uh, now, that being said, not the only car moving this morning. Neo's got earnings and the Chinese plays have been a little bit tougher. Uh, Kind of a volatile morning for the stock so far. Tell us about the numbers. A volatile morning. This stock is in the slow lane after shares. They're lower this morning. Disappointing results. Now, while the loss was narrower than expected, revenue missed expectations, and the company issued a downbeat outlook. So if we take a look at the numbers, the adjusted earnings per share, it was narrower than expected year over year, but it came in at 36 cents, negative 36 cents. Revenue was 1.55 billion dollars actually and still missed those expectations of 1.63 billion. Vehicle sales dropped and the cost of sales rose more than 24.2 percent uh, and they rose more than revenue itself. Now that came as gross margin contracted to one and a half percent 
from 13.6%. Delivery has managed to rise 20.5% to over 31,000 vehicles. Before the second quarter, Neo expects total revenue with the high end below expectations. And they expect deliveries to fall between 23,000 and 25,000. That's lower than this quarter and below their target of monthly deliveries at 33,000. Now the CFO says in the current macro environment, Neo wants to strengthen its competitive advantage um, and be able to do so in an agile and efficient manager ma manner, I should say. So we'll look to see how the company wants to do that, whether or not it'll be making any efficiency announcements. But as for now, the stock is down nearly 62% mm. over the past 12 months. It's really been taking a beating. Yeah, really bleeding out on the bottom line too, man. Yeah. Just not making any progress on that front, it seems, with the loss widening out uh, a year ago. All right, uh, thanks, Renita. Uh, good look here at some of the major differences in a sector. Tesla, getting the competitors to admit they're already ahead, having to charge up. Could be making some major lines, though, for Tesla chargers. We'll see. Uh, thanks, Renita.